At this point, we're ready to begin putting together the central content of the form. That is, we're ready to start asking questions. We'll begin with the simplest kind, and that's text questions. We're asking for a little piece of information that people type in freeform. To do this, I'm going to create a type form, and we'll make variations of it as we go through the rest of this course. I'm going to come over here to create a new type form. And we'll start from scratch. I'm going to call this one TF for type form 01. That's the name of the course. Three is the chapter one is the section or video. And this one's called text. I'll hit start building. And then I'm actually going to go full screen. There we go. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a welcome screen. Now I realize we could have done that already. But I'm going to bring that in right here to welcome screen. And I'm going to create a very simple introduction here. I'm going to add an image that I've saved to my desktop. It's the data lab logo. Then I'm going to add a small amount of text right here in the description. I'll delete that text. And I will call this a excuse me, hands on introduction to type form, because that's what it is. I'm not going to add an extra description, and we'll leave the start button just to start. So it's a very basic welcome screen, but it does what we need. So in terms of questions, we're going to start with short text, because that's the very top left kind that we can have here. We'll drag this in. And you actually usually want to begin with short text, because that's this thing that lets you ask people's names. And one of the major advantages of type form is it allows you to make it very personable, and really human. And so we'll begin with this. Let's begin with you. What's your first name? Great. And that's all we need there. I'm going to not add a description, not any put any of these things on there, I am going to make it required because I really want people to answer this because I'm going to refer to it later. So I make it required. And now you see that the little asterisk has shown up, it wasn't there a moment ago. In fact, here, watch, I'll turn it off, it goes away. Turn it on, there's the asterisk. I'll save that question. And then I'm going to ask another short text question. Again, the short text ones are for, you know, just a few words at most. I'm going to pick short text and just drag it over here. Yeah, I'm going to try doing that again. Okay. Sometimes when I'm working with type form, things don't seem to work properly. All you need to do is refresh the screen. So I'm going to do that right now. And now it's letting me drag. So that's good. So in this one, I'm going to say hi. And then I'm going to use add a variable because I'm going to repeat their name because we got that as their answer from the first one. So there is that I'm gonna say hi, name. What's your email address? And I don't need to make this one required. I think that's sufficient. I'll hit save. So now I have two short answer questions. I'm going to go to a different kind of question. Now I'm going to go to long text. That's the next kind that we have. And this is where you can get a lot more information if you're willing to, you know, read it. People can enter up to 999 characters, which is approximately 250 words, or if you double space it, it's one page of text. So it's it's a substantial amount. So let me come through here and I'm going to say, thanks for that. Next comma, and I can add their name again, I don't need to but I might. Please tell me about the things that you would that you would like to learn. And more importantly, how they would 
help you, excuse me, help you in your work. Great. So that's something that would take more than just a few words, a few sentences. I am going to add a description here. Because this question is different, it has a longer answer, I want to tell people how much information they can put. So I'm going to put the information I just told you a moment ago, 999 characters, or 250 words, or one page of text. And I'm going to say, you don't have to do it all, just put in what you think would be helpful. We don't need to put a maximum here, we don't need to make it required. By the way, the general rule about required questions is the fewer things you require people to do, the better. It's a little bossy, and it's, it can be off putting to people. And so only require something if you really truly have to have it, you'll actually get a higher completion rate, you will probably get more information that is valid. If you don't require things, but allow people to, at the very least have the sense that they are the masters of their own destiny. I'll hit save here. And so now I've got that question. I'm going to now do a statement. That's the third kind of text. Now, this isn't a question. This is where you're just talking to them. You're telling them something. I'm going to drag that one down. And I'll put it here underneath. So it'll be number four. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of my mission statement. I've got it uh, ready to paste. So I'm just going to put that in there. Our goal at datalab.cc is to help make data science and data analytics easy, understandable, and useful. We'll help you work fluently with data so you can do the things that are important to you and do them well. Now, I'm going to remove these little editorial comments to myself here. I am going to italicize this last word. And all I have to do there is I could select the word, which I've done right there, and come up here to italics. And then I have a few options. I can change the name of the button. I'm going to leave it at continue. I can add some descriptive text or maybe an image. I don't need any of that. This last one here, settings, it says icon, that's quotation marks. That has to do with this quotation that's only on the left. That actually was a design decision. The type form people explain it. You can get rid of that, or you can, I'm going to leave it on. And then I'm going to hit save. Now I am done with the type form that I want to create for this particular section of the course. This is where I'm demonstrating short text questions, long text questions, a statement. I've also created a welcome screen. And I want to finish by simply coming up to view my type form. Let's click on this. And this will open up a new tab. Now I'm full screen, so you can't really tell it's a full tab, but that opens up a new tab. And now we get to see what the type form looks like. It begins, it's a very basic thing, I can hit enter to start. What's my name? My name is Bart, I hit OK. What's my email address? It's Bart at datalab.cc. And then I can say I want to talk to people dot dot dot. You may want to put more information there. Well, if you were to do it, this is a hypothetical one. I could now hit continue because this simply indicate that I've read this paragraph. And then I have the opportunity to press submit and that would enter my data into the database that I have with Typeform. I'm actually not going to do that. I don't need that at this point. But you can also see there were only three questions. I answered all three of them. And we have our little blurb here to create your own Typeform. That's the thing that if you want to turn that off, you have to have a pro plus account. But we're doing great here. I'm going to finish right here and say that these short open ended questions can be a remarkable way of getting people to feel that they're engaged in some sort of personable dialogue and really not just sort of machine put a seven put a two put a Q whatever. And again, that's one of the great advantages of Typeform. Now, if you're trying to gather data for a research project, you're gonna have open ended data, it can be a little difficult to code it and maybe the forced choice is a little better. But the open ended here that we have with both the short text and the long text is a nice way of beginning the exercise and letting people know that they're a little more involved with you. Anyhow, that's the first set. And then we'll look at the other kinds of questions we can get in the other sections of this chapter.